Hey, and welcome back to Do News. I'm your host, King of Do, and today we're going to do a little recap of some news that uh, was kind of interesting to me today. A quiet day in the crypto world, which is a good thing, gives us time to catch up with all the news. This, this industry is moving so fast um, that being able to, to uh, take your eyes off the tickers just for a day is really nice. With that said, the markets overall are really up right now. We're actually looking at it about a 87 to 90 billion. Um, should be uh, hitting about 100 here this weekend if we stay at this pace. So 100 billion again is really going to be a significant number for uh, this whole industry. Um, it's going to get a lot of press, a lot of news coverage. It could really usher in uh, another level of investing. So we have a long ways to go. It's still super early because someday that's going to be a trillion and that'll be a fun day. And I uh, hope you guys are still here when we hit that. Um, so with that being said, today um, I found a couple interesting articles um, in regards to Walmart. You can love Walmart, you can hate Walmart, but Walmart is in the blockchain world right now. Um, there was a nice little article that came out talking about how they are working... Um, in China right now, developing blockchain technology to help with the sourcing um, of products, essentially. Mostly to help with uh, customer safety, um, help with recalls, figure out where the ingredients originated from. Um, you know, even in America, when there's a breakout, uh, a restaurant gets a bunch of people sick, some people even die. It takes them quite a while to try to figure out who is responsible and if they can't you know essentially there's all these farms that may have to just dump the entire stock or recall it all and it's just a really messy situation um blockchain technology is finally going to fix that um and it's going to be awesome so walmart's working on that right now they believe that um if they can remove um the problems in America that are derived from bad products that are making people ill uh, coming overseas, they actually believe that if they're successful, that um, something like $700 billion in uh, our healthcare would not have to be spent by the consumer here in America. So a lot of money is going towards those problems um, and health concerns and health issues, and it looks like Walmart is trying to get uh, ahead of that, way ahead of it. Uh, that's kind of like a dream, utopia kind of concept. Uh, but they're actively working on it, so that's really interesting. Other proof of Walmart in the news I saw was, um, this was actually shared with me by my CFO today, in that um, there was a patent by Walmart essentially using blockchain technology um, for their drone application. So you guys are all hearing about drones and uh, it's the wave of the future, things like that. Um, they've basically patented the concept of using blockchain technology. They're the only ones to do it as applied to drone delivery. I've talked about on this channel before about how uh, d the delivery system um, through blockchain technology is going to be more transparent, uh, more secure. There will be less uh, lost packages, etc. Um, and it's better for everybody. It'll lower insurance rates, the, the price for insurance on packages, and things like that. It's just, it's just a win-win-win all the way around. So um, essentially the, the concept is, is that they uh, were kind of patenting this idea that the drones um, would basically interact with a locker. If you're familiar with locker systems, it's where you can go and pick up your packages, kind of like a post office box, but sometimes they're in a gas station or at a store, um, and it drops it off there. Um, it's my personal belief that in 20, 30 years, neighborhoods, will, every single neighborhood will have its own locker. Um, just last week, U USPS launched a big campaign um, trying to convince people to uh, install a new mailbox which is extremely large. <laughs> it's a very large mailbox that will help facilitate, you know, probably more than half of uh, packages that people 
have delivered to their home. The idea being is um, it's really, really hard. That last mile, those last few steps that someone has to take to deliver your package is the worst part of the entire amazing logistical system that we have here in America and around the world, really. Um, it's just so hard for these delivery guys to decide what to do. They're in weird places they've never been before. Um, they don't know if they have the right door sometimes. They don't know where they should leave it. They don't know if it's safe to leave it there. Um, packages get stolen all the time on people's doorsteps. Uh, some, of, some of these guys have people following them around uh, sealing all their packages. It'll be like a crime wave through a neighborhood one day. Um, and that's not good for anybody. It's, it's not good. It's not safe. So um, in the future, there'll be, there'll be like lockers, but for neighborhoods. Um, and that is going to make delivery much easier um, for the individual to drop it off and make sure that it gets in the right place. But here's, here's something even more unique is that blockchain technology um, on top of the drone application would actually allow a drone to confirm which box it put it in. If you've ever lived in an apartment complex, you've probably gotten someone else's mail more than once, um, and vice versa. Um, so that basically can be prevented with the technology that Walmart's been working on, and they patented it. Um, and that's really exciting uh, technology that's cool, and uh, I think that we'll be seeing some prototype concepts of that happening in the future. Um, I do believe in a, in a day where... Um, you know, I don't. I know Amazon has the blimp concept. I'm not convinced of that. I am very convinced of the concept of a semi truck pulling up to a neighborhood or a part of a city and drones delivering to the nearby local lockers and securely and safely depositing the package. The driver never even touches it. Never has access to it. Not even he can contaminate or touch or open or steal anything um i think that that's in our future uh obviously uh we're really early on and uh, that's you know years and years away but the cool thing is is the technology exists to do it try to imagine the cost savings the united states postal service i would hope is spending our you know our tax dollars wisely and looking into this type of technology to lower the costs um so yeah that is some of the things uh that are going down today with walmart so they're just all over the news in, in the blockchain world and it's really fascinating because i think it's kind of going under the rug it's not getting the attention it deserves if you get into a lot of these um you know if you get onto reddit um, and even on Steam, it, it gets it often gets too much um, on the side of hey, yay, we're all making money. Um, you kind of have to dig to really find what's going on in the industry, and if you really do that, that's where you're going to find the best investment opportunities. Um, and it's something that you've you've just got to take the time to do if you're really looking to uh, capitalize on the opportunities that blockchain offers. So just keep that in mind, guys. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, wager ICO. Uh, some people brought this up. Um, I originally was planning on um, doing kind of like a deep dive into it. However, um, that wasn't possible. The white paper was released the one day before the ICO. So today was the ICO. They released it yesterday. So it wasn't enough time for me to dive into it and go through everything and actually lay it out the way that I would hope to lay it out. Um, I did read the entire thing. I think it's very well done and well thought out. But it's a little bit scary for me. Personally, it is a private blockchain. It is its own blockchain. I, you know, I don't see any smart contracts where my money's held for a certain time. They say, you know, it's just, it's tough. I want to invest in it so bad. I think they've made a mistake not building it on something like Ethereum. Um, however, if they're trying to scam everyone, they absolutely nailed it. <laughs> like, uh, tons of money is pouring into it. So, um, 
I love the concept. Um, I think it's desperately needed. It'll completely disrupt that entire industry. When I read through it and looked through it, it reminded me a lot of like 2004, 2003, the really early online poker sites like Poker Stars and Full Tilt Poker and really reminded me of those and how fascinating that was. And you could actually like gamble online and um, things like that. It was really, really fascinating. Um, but uh, this this concept of decentralized gambling already exists. It's out there. Um, this one was really taking it to the next level with sporting events. Um, I really, really, really hope that it's real. I don't know if they're going to win because they're the first ones to do it. Um, but I really hope it's real because um, I just like the concept. Um, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I would love to own some coins if it is real. Um, but I've decided to wait and see some proof of work. We literally don't even have any code to look at to know if it's real. And that's kind of what I'm waiting on. And I'll be watching it very closely and um, looking for that. So I need to see the code because I need to know if it's, uh, is it a fork of some other type of code that exists? What's it based on? Is it privacy based? Are, are all these betting transactions literally going to be completely anonymous? Um, I know that that would be a big win. Um, a lot of people would be looking for that type of solution, right? No one actually wants to use Bitcoin or Ethereum and be traced back for their gambling records, etc. Um, they want to keep it private. And so it's just one of those things that until we see the code and we truly understand what they're trying to do, um, it's hard to invest money. All that being said, maybe you have some deep pockets. Uh, if you do, uh, the masternode um, option is actually affordable. It is uh, roughly about $500. And... Uh, it's 25,000 wager to be exact. So if you're if you're thinking about investing, you would need that much. And it's, it's outlined in the white paper. Um, I did actually get on their Slack and talk to their team today about the nodes to, have, to better understand. Um, if you do set up a node, you are going to need to set up API calls. Or you can do it manually, as in manually type in who wins what game or the score of the game. But you'll need to set up API calls to a credible source like ESPN, etc. You must report um, as an Oracle masternode every hour. I was able to confirm that they are planning on every hour. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, to be safe, I probably should just plan on doing about 48 API calls. Um, in order to get the data and get it in on on time and in case my internet's out for a little while um, you know I got I got a little backup so um, that potentially would be I guess what I'm saying is that's really high risk and I think it's gonna be a solid reward if not amazing if they pull it all off I'm really uh, looking forward to that project. I will be following it closely. I'm rooting for them big time. Um, but to financially invest, you guys you guys are starting to get to know me on my channel. I had someone the other day in a comment be like, do you like any ICO or is it just your thing to hate them all? Um, it's my thing to make money. So I look for good, sound, solid investments. Um, I look for good leadership, good governance, both in the team and um, in in the actual uh, blockchain governance, digital governance system that they build out, I, I I look closely at that. That's really important to me because I think that there's good governance, bad governance. I've seen people create governance in coins where it like backfires um, to where the the community that wants to join feels like they can't because there's these people in charge and it feels a little too centralized. And so I look at things like that. Um, I also look for real value. Wager definitely has value. It totally makes sense the way that it works. 100% super clear. The ecosystem is there. So if wager isn't real and they just ran away with our money, 
then somebody else is going to do it. Because it just makes perfect sense. That's why I'm really rooting for it. Because everything I've read in the white paper is like, okay. Okay. I just want some proof of work, guys. Got to release some code first. Don't just ask for money and just not have any code to share. If it's that easy, then we just all need to get together. Everyone watching this channel, let's just create do coins. And we'll start an ICO. And I don't know, we'll just say that, you know... Um, you can trade your coins for Mountain Dew or something. And it's like people will just hand us money. We don't even need the code, right? So I don't know. Um, that's what it's starting to feel like out there. Uh, the amount of ICO requests I'm getting in my comments is starting to make my brain melt. Because I know there's a ton out there, and I've always been overwhelmed by it. But now you guys are starting to bring bring to light ones that are like, where in the world did that come from? Some of them are super fascinating. Um... Others, I, I'm like, what in the world's going on here? <laughs> this, this doesn't even make sense. But um, there's just so many ICOs that we can we can be picky, guys. You know, um, don't get caught up in all the hype. Just because we've had this huge bull run over the last few months and everyone's making lots of money and um, all your friends are like, actually believe you now because now you have all this money or something like that from your investments. Um, let's have some patience. It's still early on. Um, right? The the biggest, best internet companies that exist didn't today. They weren't around in the early 90s, right? Almost every company around in the early 90s is just, they're just off the map. They're gone, right? Um, even the really big ones like AOL, right? I don't know. I think they might still be around. They're owned by somebody, I'm sure. But, uh, <laughs> but when you look at the history of, of, of the internet, and uh, approach Bitcoin the same way and approach Ethereum the same way and um, start trying to understand what they are and where they fit in into the ecosystem of what this will become. And when you really just kind of slow things down, like a day like today, when things are nice and easy, um, nothing crazy in the market's happening, there's no whales dumping or pumping um, on these calm, beautiful days it's nice to just remember that there's a lot of time in front of us and a lot of opportunity. I know we all dream and fantasize of, you know, getting rich tomorrow, whether that's you own Ethereum and, you you know, it's going to be a $10 coin or you're dreaming of NEM being $5 or you're dreaming of, uh, you know, Dash going to the moon, you know, all that aside, um, it's going to take time. It will not happen overnight. Uh, there will be massive gains. There will be amazing losses along the way. But overall, make sure that you guys are investing wisely. You're diversified properly. Because it's a long-term approach, right? Go back and look up what, what it would have been like if you just diversified um, back in even the mid-90s or even the late 90s when it comes to the internet. Um... Just go back and look and see what that would have been like, right? You would have had a ton of crashes, but you also would have struck some gold. Big time. Big, big time. Um, and that's true for most markets like this, guys. That's historically the way it works. Um, the best part about this is like this is like you just got into the Silicon Valley market uh, before it was what it is today, <laughs> right? Well before. And you're actually in that now. That's super exciting to be a part of that. And um, so, but you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, right? So it's tough. Everyone has a limited amount of money, um, limited amount of resources and time. So picking out what you want to invest in and things like that. Um, be smart about it and take your time. It's, it, you know, sleep on it sometimes. Um, even today, um, even today, I, I got out of some positions in my portfolio just because I was like, well, I, do I really believe in this one in five years? I really like what they're doing right now, right, and what they're accomplishing. But when I started comparing them against their competitors or um, other solutions, I'm really like, do they really have that X factor to, to be that ridiculous 
you know, to be that ridiculous 10,000, 20,000% gain. And um, many of them are probably, you know, maybe some of them I let go will be thousands and things like that. But I just didn't believe in the, the exponential return. And they were smaller positions, and I just said, you know what? These smaller positions, I could sit here, and sure, I might come online one day, and they may have doubled. Cool. But um, I'd rather be better diversified in things I actually really believe for the long term, um, the real movers and the shakers. Um, I will still put money into things like ICOs. I still put money into some of these smaller altcoins, but at the end of the day... Um, I want to make sure that I have funds available for the long haul. I want to, even when I have some of these just go to zero, I want to make sure that I still have money available um, to be putting into the coin that no one's ever, no, that's not even out yet. The coin that hasn't even been conceived in one's mind yet. That is still out there. It's still waiting for us, and we just need to be patient. So. Do forgive me, I am quite critical of a lot of the ICOs and things like that, but but I hope that's helpful. I think there's a lot of people out there that get a little too high on a lot of these opportunities, um, and just got to be careful. Even like Brave, now we have to even be more careful because if, if, if the community doesn't figure out how to stop the whales from owning 99% um, of essentially the coins within like a hundred people if we don't figure out how to stop that from happening um we're not gonna really progress as a community anytime soon it's got to be figured out we got to help we got to help the regular people get in on these opportunities because that's the concept um it's not helping anyone uh i don't i don't think i had one viewer say that they actually were able to successfully invest in brave please leave a comment if you did i'd be uh interested to hear uh who got into it and talk to you about it um as you guys know i have reached out to them and asked to actually be a part of the program uh professionally just to look into the uh technology and consider its use for for my world um so i will be hopefully hopefully uh, be getting in some type of beta program and can uh, hopefully have some things to share with you guys in the future on Brave. But all that being said, right now there it's it's just kind of crazy out there with investing. Um, if you did get into Brave, I'm curious how you feel knowing that you're basically nothing, like legitimately nothing, um, knowing that there's 100 people who have 99% of the entire coin in their control they can do whatever they want um, to the price they can choose for you to lose it all or choose for you to be rich I don't know which one they're gonna choose for you I don't but it's definitely scary I will be super fascinated by its launch onto the exchanges I cannot wait it's gonna be a fascinating day um, I, hopefully there's some good news coverage on it but anyhow guys um, kind of ranted there, but I just wanted to say some quick thank you, some huge thank yous. Huge. I actually got some names here of people I wanted to thank. I wanted to thank, uh, Robert Call. He sent me 10 Steam. It was incredible. I, I did a, I did a Steam It video earlier today to try to help some people on my channel who had some questions about it. Um, and I just did it on a whim. It wasn't, I definitely didn't do it very professionally or take time to plan it out. Um, I just was like, I'm going to try to just help some people uh, figure it out real quick and get them started, get them on the path. And um, man, uh, Robert, you, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for your donation. Um, I also want to thank um, Gareth Patterson. He is uh, one of my, uh, I say a long time follower. I haven't been doing this long, guys, but a long time follower. Uh, and he sent me a, a NIM donation. And he was actually the guy that encrypted it, and I didn't know what to do with it. And he actually taught me how to unencrypt it and uh, didn't even know NIM had an encryption feature. So NIM got cooler for me. Um, um, at the same time, thank you. Thank you so much for your donation. I really appreciate it. Um, it keeps me passionate about what I'm doing and uh, keeps encouraging me to keep going forward. Um, I hope that... 
uh, Nim reaches much higher heights now more than ever. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so that's it, guys. As always, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Um, go ahead and leave a comment below about anything. Uh, I take requests. I have a huge file. All I have every viewer that leaves a request, I literally put it in a Google Sheet, and I'm tracking all of them. There's no way in my lifetime I get to all of them, but as things uh, get rise up to the service surface, I look into it and I talk about it on the channel. Also, um, I look at almost everything probably about 95 percent to 99 percent of everything that a comment has left i actually literally go look into it um whether or not i talk about it on the channel things like that I, you know that's that's who knows if i will but i do actually go and look into it so i really do appreciate you guys sharing the information yeah it really helps me learn more about the industry and find new opportunities um that all being said, um, you know, hop over on Steam it, give me a upvote, uh, leave a comment there as well. Uh, the conversations on Steam it are so good. Make sure you comment there as well as on YouTube because the crypto uh, verse over there, all the blockchain experts and cryptocurrency experts, uh, they use it. it um, they're fascinated by it, and they're all over there using it and having conversations. Uh, sometimes that are way above my head. They know what they're talking about on Steemit. So make sure you uh, go over there and leave some good questions. You'll get amazing answers. Um, not just not just on my videos, guys. I'm just saying in general, go to Steemit and ask questions there. Way better quality than you would ever get on Reddit. I promise you that. Um, so anyhow, that's it for today. I hope you guys uh, appreciated this episode. Again, if you like this type of content, go ahead and subscribe. I'm here almost every day. It seems like I'm here every day. Am I here every day? I'm pretty sure I'm here every day for you guys. I try my best to be here every day. Um, oh, by the way, kickball team, got a butt's kick. It was sad. Um, but there's always next week, right? All right, guys, appreciate your time. I hope you guys are having a great day. And, uh, you know, make sure you appreciate the days like today where everything's kind of up and you're making good money. So be thankful for where you're at. Be thankful that you're here and you're in the game and you're a part of this amazing community as well. I think I think there's so much opportunity, not just um, investment-wise, but just opportunity to be a part of something that is so incredible. So I'm glad you're here for the ride. I hope you guys will stick around with me for um, all of it. And with all that said, I am the King of Dew. May the Force be with you. You guys have a great night.